All right, so this is the VNT replica that I've been talking about for the last month. Um, for longer than that. Actually. This has been a project of mine for about three years, three years about. And uh, so yeah, this is a uh, this is my first time doing a live feed, and uh, I'm probably gonna jumble my words around. Um, so I'm gonna go inside the house, and then we're gonna open the garage, and you guys are gonna see what we got here. We have cameraman Mike. Uh, he's gonna be doing a lot of this, uh, showing off. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, now let's wait for him to open the door. Okay, so what is it? This is a replica of Virginia and Truckee Model T number 24. This was number 24 on the passenger car roster. And uh, as you can see, it's not on railroad tracks, but uh, eventually the plan is to. So this is a publication by the VNT Historical Society. Um, and we have right here. The entire history of the car plus a great picture of the real thing so the vnt purchased this in uh 1924 um and uh they used it for track inspections and for um doing uh you know just getting from point a to point b uh, a lot of the executives use this this car do they ever de uh, deliver out the payrolls with it i don't think so no there's not actually a lot about this car uh, documented. Uh, however, there is, um, you know, this is, this is your best source of information for the, this car. Uh, unfortunately, this car did not survive. Uh, it was wrecked in 1927. It was hit by a, a truck, and uh, <clears throat> that was the end of it. By that time, speeders were um, more mainstream. So the VNT just stopped it to go with the speeder rather than buying a Model A or a Model T. Um, so over here, we'll show you some other stuff that. It, by the way, it's not done. There's still a lot to do. I still have to build the wheels. I still have to put a new top on the car. Um, there's still some parts that need to get painted, uh, mostly just the headlights and the uh, radiator. And uh, yeah, I mean it's. You know, it's at a point now where we can actually show it off though. So, over here. These are the wheels. So I got these from the Kalamazoo company in, uh, down in SoCal. Uh, I don't think they're producing these anymore. But these are essentially for a hand car. Uh, so the, the <clears throat> VNT, when they purchased this car, they purchased along with it um, a conversion kit from Kalamazoo company um, and what they basically were were um, uh, velocity wheels or hand car wheels um, so that's essentially what we're going to be doing here I at my museum have restored a velocity so we already have the template on hand to do yeah. that Uh, so about uh, how far along are you in the project so far? Uh, you got a lot of the body work and paint work already done. Right. The, the biggest problem with this car was the body work. I mean, there was a lot of body work that had to be done to, to get this uh, ready for um, showing it to you guys and getting it ready for paint. Painting is easy. The body work is the hard part. So here's a template for the, uh, for the wheels. So you'd use this on a table router and you'd cut the, you'd use this to kind of shape your uh, yeah, the wheel spokes. The wheel spokes. Yeah. Makes the process so much more efficient. Um, so, uh, like you were saying, you got the uh, pretty much all the body work done. It's been painted. It's clear coated, and it runs. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, uh, about how much more work do you think you have to do? Well, the next big purchase is going to be putting the top on. Um, there's uh, interior paneling here that need, I need to put on. Um, see if you can kind of just see the interior framing on the door. What was that made of? It, it depends. Um, I, what was on here before was like a card stock kind of material, kind of a paper material. I don't know what I'm going to get. Whatever I'm going to get is going to be more authentic than what it had before probably. Okay, so let's go around the front. So in the shade a little bit, but we'll, uh, are we going to go around uh, the uh, neighborhood? Yeah, so when you put it, when you know a lot of uh, a lot of time was spent getting this thing ready, it was uh, in pieces when I got to see it. Uh, so it's really cool to see it finally starting to come together. Uh, before that, it was it was an interesting process to to see it uh, bit by bit kind of becoming what you see now. Uh, but it, it looks really great. It turned out very well. Yeah, I, I did tell a, a select few uh, close friends about the project, and that's about it. And I, I didn't uh, some people that you were you were trying to find historical information on the colors for the car and how yeah, to I paint it. I, yeah, uh, so and they they kind of guessed. We, we could talk about <laughs> colors for a second. Um, so the colors are as close as I can get to what they have. Twenty four. Uh, the green is not your typical VNT green that you think of, which is that very bright kind of. Chrome green. Not chrome yeah. green. Um, this is almost like a very dark. All of, the engine's currently uh, leaking water, uh, and that's a freeze plug that's um, corroded. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a uh, old uh, buffalo nickel to repair it, and that's how they would have done it back in the day. Um, so that's this side of the engine. We'll show the other side. It is insanely hot today. Well, that is, we were coming back from Carson yesterday, but still, it's it's pretty humid. So, right, so yeah. This side, nothing much more to see except for the horn. I don't know how well they can see that. It's not a real Malty horn, but it's a good substitute. What do you mean, real Malty horn? Um, so, what is it? I'm not sure what it is. I got it at a, a swap meet, though. But you said it uh, pretty much sounds the same. It sounds similar. It's not the same. So right. let's, uh, before we uh, start this thing up again, let's try to get a shot of it in the light. For people watching, this is an original Model T. It's not like a replica that you can sometimes get parts table. for. But it's just not a VNT original. Right. Okay. So uh, what we'll do next um, is we're gonna get uh, I'm gonna get the car started. I'm gonna crank it this time because that's probably what you all want to see. Um, and then we're gonna go out for a little drive. Okay. Okay, he's gonna pull it out. Hopefully I don't get run over.
I guess this is kind of a uh, kind of a simulation for what it's going to be like to actually ride this thing. Obviously, we're not on rails yet, but uh, it's not hard to imagine. This is actually my first time riding in it. Obviously no turn signals, so we have to use hand signals. This is a bit of a bouncy ride compared to uh, what most people are probably used to uh, riding at your average car. But it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. hard to hear, I don't know. Thank you guys. It's uh, kind of a bouncy ride a little bit. The streets in this area aren't too great. But thankfully there's not a whole lot of traffic so that's the upside to it.
Okay. Yeah, this is exciting. I'm going to be posting to the group updates on what's going on with the car. Uh, I'm hoping to have it be 100% complete by 2022. Um, and that's including the railroad wheels and putting a new rear axle on, which is going to be a uh, Ruxtel rear axle. Um, that's what the original had, so that's what I'm going to do also. Is there any advantage that to uh, to that over uh, the original? Better hill climbing. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so repeat again, uh, what was it that you had left to do? You obviously have the wheels still to make. Wheels, um, there's some interior work, there's uh, the top that needs to get put on. Uh, you need a new steering wheel too, don't you? The previous... Okay, uh, start over again, I just it was interrupted. The, the previous owner, for whatever reason, was trying to make this 1923 Model T a brass era car. Um, I mean, if you look here on the side of the wheels, he painted the rims gold. To make it look more vintage <clears throat> it also has brass uh, caps which I'm gonna try replacing too eventually these wheels will also be painted green at, at some point point. and uh, yeah he put a brass wheel on the car and I do want to change that to what the original would have had which you mean the steering wheel yeah on the steering wheel uh, so there's some things that I'm gonna be doing to the car still to uh, Try to make it more uh, authentic. Um, lots of just little things here and there that need to be done. Um, but you know, the majority of the body, I mean, all the body work is done. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, I can finally take this out and enjoy it on Sundays. Yeah. I need a haircut, I can drive it to the barber shop. I need to go to the grocery store, I drive it to the grocery store. Um, and, you know, this, it, it's always fun to take out because people really enjoy seeing it. You know, they see this, they don't see the car like this every day. Um, so, you know, you always get waves or people will be extra nice to you on the road. Uh, no road rage. It's, yeah. kind of, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, something I'd like to uh, add is uh, lately I've, uh, I've realized, uh, you know, over, over time, you know, you see a lot of locomotives restored and sometimes... Uh, Restorations, they will generally require a lot of the original material to be replaced. A famous instance is uh, the Sierra Number no. 3 locomotive at uh, Jamestown. It had its entire boiler replaced. There's very little of that engine that was as it was from the factory. But there's a couple of things to remember in cases like that. Even though it's so much changed and there's no originality. In this case, this is a replica, in it, for instance. There's a couple of things. Uh, you have to bear in mind the practices that were used to recreate it, which would have been very similar to what was done on the original. And two, it's the experience of seeing it and writing it and uh, just for it to exist and for future and current generations to be able to experience something like this. Because people these days are so far removed from like a Model T driving down the street or a Model T like this on the Virginia and Truckee Railroad. You know, this uh, this replica 24, there hasn't been one since 1927 when it was destroyed. Uh, so I think it's very important for people to remember is that although it's a replica, it's simulating the experience that people would have uh, getting to see something like this, which is the most important thing. So, um, some more history on this particular vehicle. All I know is it came from Gold Country and the second or third owner wanted to turn it into a brass era car which it never was um so so in a way you're actually even though it's not how it would have been from the factory when the first owner bought it right. it's actually more authentic than when you got it yeah i mean the the thing with this car is there's not a lot of there's no significant history to it if there was a significant history to it like if it was built at the panama pacific expedition or something i would not dare to, to you know, alter a car like that and turn it into the 24. Um, but, uh, you know, this this one doesn't have anything really significant going on for it, so that's why I thought it was a good candidate to yeah. uh, turn into a replica. And there are still a lot of Model Ts out there on the road. Yeah, wasn't the Model T at one time, it was, well, it was obviously like one of the most popular cars in the world. Well, it was, a, it was affordable. 
yeah, it was like, like Ford's revolution, you know, it kind of changed the way, yeah, as a matter of fact, it, ironically, the Model T that the VNT bought was what ultimately led the revolution that took traffic away from railroads. So it's, it's kind of interesting that uh, they had one. Um, but yeah. So going back to paint, there will be some more paint put on the car. Right here in the center, it's going to say VNT. RY and ampersand uh, an ampersand for the end yeah yeah uh, 24 um, that's gonna be on the other side as well and then on the back here I'm gonna have just the number 24 on the back because that's what the motor cars the, right. on the VNT well, that's, that's how they were done cars on the VNT. they had something they had a number on the back and since there's no, there's only one photograph of this car so this is all I have to work off of, is this one photograph. Isn't there a lot of uh, written documentation about the original, like uh, the how many hours that took them to paint it? There's there's all that information, yeah. I mean, a lot of the VNT uh, um, documentation has been saved. Uh, yeah, it's fortunate, because a lot of railroads, particularly ones that went bankrupt and were torn up, like the VNT was, a lot of those records were lost. They don't exist. So for the VNT to have things like you know, information on this car, like Ryan said, there's only one picture of it. To be able to do this recreation with that information is so valuable. And so makes it so much more authentic, too. Yeah. So before, we're going to actually head off, turn the stream off pretty soon. But I have a few thank yous. Uh, first, thank you, Stephen Drew, for uh, providing a lot of uh, historical information on this car. Uh, and for uh, writing, along with Mike Collins, the, uh, the VNT book. Uh, this really helped me uh, uh, get my act together and, and buy this car and actually get the replica made. Um, the other one is Andrew Brandon for paint research. Uh, yeah, Andrew's been a big help. Yep. Uh, the uh, last uh, last two are going to be uh, Jim Wilkie. Uh, he provided the hood. Uh, I traded a hood uh, to him for another hood. Uh, and then also Todd Moore for uh, getting me a new radiator. So, um, yeah, we just saw Todd yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for those people. Um, you know, yeah, been a big help in this project. Help in this project. Yeah. yeah.